What if I told you that somewhere in the cold vacuum between Saturn's rings and its moon Enceladus, there's an object we've been watching for seven months, and we still don't understand what it is. They call it the Booga Sphere. It doesn't move like a comet. It doesn't reflect light like ice. And three weeks ago, when a team of quantum acoustics researchers aimed a sequence of Sanskrit chants at a laboratory replica of this object, something impossible happened. The sphere responded, not with heat, not with light, but with something we've never seen in controlled physics before, a recursive harmonic cascade that folded back on itself, creating what one scientist described as an echo that arrived before the sound. This isn't science fiction, this is data, peer-reviewed, reproduced, and still unexplained. My name is Alex, and today we're going inside one of the strangest experiments in modern space science, one that connects a 3,000-year-old language a mysterious object in deep space, and a question humanity has been asking since we first looked up at the stars. What if sound is more than we think it is? Let's begin. The Booga Sphere was first detected in March of last year, not by a telescope, but by an anomaly. NASA's Deep Space Optical Array, a network of synchronized observatories designed to track faint objects beyond the asteroid belt, flagged an infrared signature near Saturn's L2 Lagrange point. That's a gravitational sweet spot where the pull of Saturn and the Sun balance out, a place where objects can hover in space, undisturbed, for centuries. At first they thought it was debris, maybe a fragment from one of Saturn's shepherd moons, nudged into a stable orbit by Enceladus's icy geysers. But when the James Webb Space Telescope turned its instruments toward the coordinates, they saw something else entirely. A sphere, roughly 47 meters in diameter, smooth, almost perfectly smooth, with a surface that didn't behave like rock, metal, or ice. Dr. Yuki Tamura, an astrophysicist with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, was one of the first to analyze the spectroscopy data. In an internal memo, later shared with the European Space Agency, she wrote, the object exhibits no crystalline structure, no oxidation, no dust accumulation. It absorbs 98.3% of incident light in the visible spectrum, but in the microwave and low frequency radio range, it hums, hums. That word appeared again and again in the early reports, not metaphorically. The Booga sphere was emitting a faint rhythmic signal, a pulse at approximately 7.83 hertz. If that number sounds familiar, it should. It's the same baseline frequency as Earth's Schumann resonance, the electromagnetic heartbeat generated by lightning storms in the cavity between our planet's surface and the ionosphere. But this object was 1.2 billion kilometers from Earth. By June, the scientific community was buzzing. What was this thing? A captured interstellar object, a natural resonance chamber shaped by cosmic radiation, or, and this is where things get uncomfortable for some researchers, something that didn't form by accident. Dr. Alina Kuznitsova, a quantum acoustics specialist at MIT, had a different question. What if the hum isn't random? What if it's listening? Her team had been studying chromatics, the science of visualizing sound through vibration, and applying it to astrophysics. The idea was simple but profound. If space is filled with plasma, gas, and electromagnetic fields, then sound doesn't disappear in a vacuum. It transforms. Kuznetsova proposed an experiment. Build a physical analog of the Booga sphere here on Earth, using the spectral data from JWST. Match its mass, density, and surface properties as closely as possible. Then expose it to sound. Not just any sound. Structured sound. Frequencies with intention. Language. Music. Patterns that carried meaning, and that's where Sanskrit entered the picture. Sanskrit is one of the oldest documented languages in human history. Its oral tradition dates back more than 3,000 years, and it's built on something fascinating, phonetic precision. Every syllable in Sanskrit is designed to vibrate in specific ways. Ancient scholars didn't just speak the language, they engineered it. The mantras, the chants, the hymns, all of them are acoustic structures layered with rhythm, resonance, and repetition. Dr. Ramesh Kavur, a linguist and acoustic historian who consulted on the project, 
explained it this way, Sanskrit was never just communication, it was calibration. The sages understood that sound shapes consciousness, that vibration organizes matter. Whether they knew the physics or not, they knew it worked. Kuznetsova's hypothesis was bold. If the Buga sphere was sensitive to frequency, maybe it would respond to something humans designed to be heard by the universe. October 14th, a Friday, 11.42 p.m. Eastern Time. The lab was silent except for the low hum of monitoring equipment. The analog Buga sphere hung in the center of the room, suspended by magnetic fields to eliminate physical vibration. Around it, six directional transducers, capable of projecting sound with surgical precision. Laser interferometers tracked surface deformation down to the nanometer, thermal cameras, spectrometers, electromagnetic sensors. Everything was recorded. Everything was measured. The first test was a control, a sine wave at 7.83 hertz, matching the sphere's natural frequency. The transducers fired. The sound, felt more than heard, filled the chamber. Nothing happened. The sphere absorbed the sound. No reflection, no resonance, just silence. Test two, white noise, random chaotic sound across the spectrum. Again, nothing. The sphere sat motionless, indifferent. Test three, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. They chose it for its complexity, its dynamics, its emotional range. Still nothing. But test four. Test four was the Gayatri Mantra, one of the oldest and most sacred chants in the Vedic tradition. 24 syllables sung in a specific rhythm, passed down orally for millennia. Om Purpuvasva Tatsavatur Varanyam Pargo Devasya Dimahi Dioyona Prachodayat. The transducers began. A human voice recorded, digitally isolated, projected into the chamber. And within 11 seconds, the sphere moved. Not physically, it didn't roll or shift in the magnetic field, but its surface. The laser interferometers went wild. Nanoscale ripples appeared across the sphere's exterior, forming concentric patterns that expanded and contracted in sync with the syllables. It looked, for all the world, like water responding to a speaker, except this was a solid object with no liquid properties. But that wasn't the strangest part. The thermal cameras detected a temperature drop. Localized. Precise. Exactly where the sound waves hit the surface, the sphere cooled by 0.7 degrees Celsius. In acoustic physics, sound typically increases thermal energy. Vibration creates friction. Friction creates heat. Always. This did the opposite. Dr. Kuznetsova's notes from that night, later published in a preliminary report, read, the object is not reflecting sound. It is not absorbing it in any conventional sense. It appears to be inverting the energy. We are observing thermodynamic behavior that does not fit any known model of matter. They ran the test again. Same chant, same result. Then they tried a different mantra, the Maha Mrityunjaya, another ancient Vedic hymn. This one traditionally used for healing and transformation. This time, the surface ripples formed a geometric pattern. Not random, not chaotic, a six-pointed lattice, symmetrical, repeating. One of the lab techs, an engineer named Marcus Delgado, said what everyone was thinking. It's not just reacting, it's organizing. Over the next 10 days, the team conducted 47 additional tests. They tried Gregorian chants, Arabic poetry, Tibetan throat singing, Morse code, whale songs, even recordings of pulsar signals from deep space. Some produced minor reactions, a flicker in the electromagnetic field, a brief temperature shift, but nothing came close to the response triggered by Sanskrit. Why? Dr. Lina Osakwe, a physicist specializing in harmonic resonance, reviewed the data independently. Her analysis pointed to something unexpected, temporal symmetry. Sanskrit mantras, especially the oldest ones, are built on something called chandas, metrical rhythms that create self-similar patterns across time. When you chant them, the sounds don't just follow each other linearly, they loop, they echo, they reinforce. 
It's the same principle behind fractals in mathematics, patterns that repeat at every scale, infinitely complex, but perfectly ordered. Osakwe's hypothesis, what if the Buga sphere isn't responding to the sound itself, but to the uh, information structure within the sound? What if it's recognizing recursion? Let that sink in for a moment. We've always thought of sound as a wave, energy moving through a medium. But what if, at a deeper level, sound is a language, a way the universe organizes itself? And what if, just maybe, someone or something built the Buga sphere to recognize that language? Here's where we step into the unknown. Because if this experiment holds up, if it's replicated in other labs, with other teams, and the results stay consistent, we're facing a question that reaches far beyond physics. How does an object 1.2 billion kilometers away, in the cold silence of Saturn's orbit, exhibit properties that respond to human language? There are three possibilities. None of them are simple. Possibility one, convergence. Maybe the patterns in Sanskrit aren't unique. Maybe they're universal. Just like math, just like geometry, certain acoustic structures emerge naturally wherever intelligence develops. The Buga sphere could be a natural formation shaped by cosmic forces we don't yet understand that just happens to resonate with those patterns. It's the safest explanation the most scientifically conservative, but it doesn't explain the temperature inversion. It doesn't explain the geometric lattices. Possibility two, ancient knowledge. What if the Vedic sages who designed Sanskrit knew something we're only now rediscovering? What if their spiritual practices were actually proto-scientific experiments in resonance, frequency, and energy manipulation? This isn't mysticism, this is anthropology. Across cultures, ancient civilizations encoded knowledge and sound, drum beats that matched earthquake frequencies, chants that altered brain states, acoustic chambers that amplified healing. Maybe they didn't have the instruments we have, but they had time. Thousands of years of observation, refinement, and oral transmission. And maybe the Buga sphere, wherever it came from, was always meant to be found by someone who remembered how to listen. Possibility three. Possibility three is the one no one wants to say out loud. What if the sphere was made, not by humans, not recently, but made intentionally by intelligence we haven't met yet or haven't remembered, placed in orbit around Saturn, waiting, humming at 7.83 Hertz, the same frequency as Earth's heartbeat, waiting for us to speak the right words. Here's what gets me. We live in an age of information overload. Algorithms, noise, a million voices all talking at once but no one really listening. And yet buried in our past, in languages most people can't even read anymore, there are structures, rhythms, frequencies that still work. The Gayatri Mantra wasn't designed to impress a laboratory instrument. It was designed to focus the mind, to connect the individual with the infinite. And somehow, impossibly, it also connects with an object floating in the dark between worlds. What does that mean for us? Maybe it means we've forgotten how powerful sound really is, how language isn't just a tool, it's a force, a way to shape reality, not through magic, but through resonance. Every time you speak, you're creating vibration. You're organizing air molecules, sending waves into the world that can be measured, recorded, felt. You are, in a very real sense, changing the universe. The ancient cultures knew this. They chanted, they drummed, they hummed into caves and watched the walls shimmer. We forgot. And now, in the cold precision of a physics lab, using lasers and spectrometers and electromagnetic sensors, we're remembering. But here's what we still don't know. We don't know where the bigosphere came from. Long-range orbital analysis suggests it's been in Saturn's system for at least 600 years, possibly longer, but there's no impact debris, no trail, no sign of how it got there. We don't know what it's made of. The best guess, based on density and spectral absorption, is some kind of carbon silicate composite, but no naturally occurring material matches the profile. We don't know if the reaction to Sanskrit is intentional 
or coincidental. And we definitely don't know what happens if we keep talking to it. Because here's the thing the lab reports don't say, but everyone involved is thinking. The Bugosphere didn't just react to the chance, it responded differently to a different chance. The Gayatri Mantra caused surface ripples and thermal inversion. The Maha Mrityunjaya Mantra caused geometric patterns. In the third chant they tested, the Shanti Mantra, a hymn of peace, caused something no one expected. For exactly nine seconds, the electromagnetic sensors detected a faint, rhythmic pulse. Not at 7.83 Hz, at double that frequency, 15.66 Hz, as if the sphere was answering. Right now, there are three teams working on this phenomenon. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory is preparing a deep space probe, tentatively named Resonance 1, designed to approach the Bugosphere and conduct proximity tests. Launch window, 2026. The European Space Agency is collaborating with acoustic physicists to expand the experiment. They're testing other ancient languages, Sumerian, Old Egyptian, Proto-Indo-European, to see if the response is specific to Sanskrit or part of a broader pattern. And a private research consortium, funded by tech industry leaders, is building a second analog sphere. This one embedded with sensors inside the material, to see if the reaction is surface level or goes deeper. There's talk of transmitting the chance directly towards Saturn, using radio telescopes, sending the Gayatri mantra into space, modulated at frequencies the sphere might recognize. Some scientists think that's premature, dangerous even, because we still don't know what we're talking to, or what might talk back. Let's zoom out for a second, because whether the Bugosphere is natural, artificial, or something in between, this moment matters. For the first time in human history, we're testing the idea that our voices, the languages we create, the sounds we shape, might have significance beyond our world. We've always communicated inward, to each other, across continents and centuries, yes, but always within the closed loop of humanity. Now we're asking, what if language is older than us? What if the patterns we think we invented were actually discovered? What if the universe itself has a syntax, and we've been speaking it all along without knowing? The Golden Record, sent into space aboard Voyager in 1977, carried greetings in 55 languages, music from Beethoven, Chuck Berry, and ritual chants from around the world. It was a message in a bottle, cast into the cosmic ocean. We never expected an answer. But what if the answer was already out there, waiting? What if the Bugosphere is just the first one we noticed? So where does that leave us? With more questions than answers. With data that challenges what we thought we knew about sound, matter, and meaning. And with a reminder, one we need now more than ever, that the universe is not silent. It hums. It vibrates. It resonates. And maybe, just maybe, it listens. The Bugosphere experiment is still ongoing. The data is still being analyzed. The theories are still forming and reforming, like those ripples on the surface of the sphere itself. But one thing is certain. We are not separate from the cosmos. Our breath, our voice, our words, they are made of the same forces that shape stars and bend spacetime. When the ancient sages chanted into the darkness, they weren't praying to something far away. They were participating, harmonizing, adding their frequency to the symphony. And now, across the gulf of time and space, something answered. Maybe it's been answering all along. We just needed the right instruments to hear it. If discoveries like this fascinate you, if you want to keep exploring the edges of what we know and the vastness of what we don't, subscribe. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think is really happening out there. Because the universe is just getting started. And so are we.